All right, thanks everyone for being here. Um, we're gonna talk, each of us, I guess, eight minutes or so about some different uh, alternative strategies in education in which we've been involved. Of course, uh, Delo's not, a, Dr. DeLorenzo is not an easy guy to follow, so I think uh, uh, Dr. Woods is up to the task, so we'll start with you. <laughs> I'm gonna be very straightforward today because the time is so limited, so no jokes at all, just straightforward. Jokes tonight. I'll tell some jokes tonight, and those will be alcohol-fueled, so by definition, much better than what I would have told today. I'll start off the way I have to start off every talk these days, which is I have an e-book on this subject, which is free. I actually have an e-book I put together called Education Without the State because this, is, of course, is probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks we face. After the roads, then they want to know, well, how are you going to have schools unless somebody is, you know, clocking you in the head to take money from you to fund them? And the answer is you just don't, you don't need that at all. So the, uh, the book is called Education Without the State, and you can get it for free at, the website is nostateeducation.com. So I've got that, that stuff there. All right, I'm gonna talk about a couple of uh, practical things that I've been involved in. Because another criticism we get is that we're all about theory, but we're not enough about practice. It's great to hear theoretical explanations for things, and it's wonderful to understand how society ought to function, but how about we get off our rear ends and actually do something, actually implement the theory so that it affects people's lives. So that's, one of, that's something that I've been very sensitive to, and so I've tried to respond to that. And one of the projects I've been involved in is the K through 12 Ron Paul homeschool curriculum. And the benefits of the Ron Paul curriculum are, are many. And this is a very practical way to advance our ideas. There are a lot of impractical ways. There, there are um, political action committees that have spent millions and mil tens of millions of dollars fruitlessly, nothing to show for it. And not one of those people ever thought, what if we created a homeschool curriculum to train young people so that the whole country wouldn't be zombies? It just doesn't even occur to them to spend the money that way. It's, it's always graft. You know, how can we make sure that political consultants are, are getting paid five figures a month? That's the primary uh, goal, apparently. But we had a different goal with the, the Ron Paul curriculum. So it's self-taught and video-based, which means that if you're a homeschooling parent and you're running yourself ragged to keep your house in order and make sure everybody's doing the right thing and there are all kinds of challenges that you face, 90% of that is wiped away by, by this self-taught program. Of course it will give your kids a different perspective from what they're gonna get in government-run schools. That's true in economics, in history, and other fields. But that's not even its primary merit, although it's a very great merit. There are courses in this curriculum that are highly practical that you're not gonna, certainly not gonna get in one of the government buildings. The, these government-run uh, schools are gonna train you like it's 1953. And you're gonna be taught no practical skills whatsoever. You're not gonna be taught how to market yourself, how to find a niche for yourself, how to be entrepreneurial. You're just gonna be sent out to college for four years, and then after that, you're gonna sit at home waiting for the phone to ring, on the other end of which is somebody telling you that they think you're useful. Well, this doesn't work in 2021 at all, if it ever did. So we have courses on how to run your own home business. How about that? Or a course on how to write effective advertising copy. If you know how to do that, and you're halfway decent at that, you'll never be poor, period. That, that is, that's beyond debate. Uh, we have a course on how to be an effective public speaker. Because if we convey information to people, that is step one, but that's not the only step. The other step is teaching people how in turn to convey the ideas further to others. And public speaking is one of those things many, many people are terrified of. So we have a course on that how to be an effective public speaker. We also teach people, young people, how to blog. Now, blogs aren't as popular as they used to be, say, five years ago, but they're not nothing. And they teach people how to write, how to write concisely, which is especially important. We teach them how to use the standard video platforms. In other words, how to use resources out there that are free, 
that they can convey ideas with. So the website for it is ronpaulhomeschool.com. That's my uh, affiliate site. I give you a lot of bonuses if you join through it. But it's, it's not enough even just to think about the kids because then there are all of us in this room, the adults. All of us suffered educational malpractice. That's a fact. All of us. And I don't want to leave the adults out either. So I have an adult program uh, called libertyclassroom.com. Uh, now, it's true, some older students will use it for homeschooling. It has been used for homeschooling. But I intended it mainly as adult enrichment for people who feel like they didn't get the real story in school. Or maybe they were just bad students and they weren't paying attention and they want to learn the stuff now. And so this is, these are courses on, again, history, economics, philosophy, related fields that you can listen to and consume while you're driving around. And it's the real stuff taught by me and by other faculty members I trust. And the principle of it is I cannot fix Yale University and I cannot fix the uh, crazy things that are taught there, but I can create my own thing and go around them. And this is what we mean about strategy. It would be a bad strategy to hold a sign outside the Yale History Department. That would be stupid and pathetic and weak. It's, it's, it's brilliant and amazing and strong to build your own thing despite these people, and that's what we're doing. The great Glenn Jacobs, you'll remember him from the wrestling world as Kane, said that Liberty Classroom taught him more history than he learned in all of high school and college. So libertyclassroom.com is the website, and if you'd like to give it a test drive, you can take a free course at freehistorycourse.com. Can you believe freehistorycourse.com was available? But the old man here snatched it up and put it to good use. So that's the second thing. And finally, the third thing, I told you I had a lot to say and very little time in which to say it. Uh, finally, education is not just about history and, and the sciences and whatever. And by the way, the Ron Paul curriculum, science curriculum, is amazing. The kids are, are building robots and radios and they're learning meteorology and how to survive in the outdoors. They're not just learning formulas that are abstracted from actual living. But there's more to because these days, most of the struggles people have in this room and around the country have nothing to do with the non-aggression principle or libertarianism. Most of the struggles that they face. They want to know, uh, what, with the Fed doing what it's doing, where should I put my money? The answer can't just be gold. What do I do? Tell me what I'm supposed to do with my money. Or how am I supposed to educate my kids in a society that hates me? How am I supposed to do it? I have to homeschool them? I don't see how that's possible. I have to work for a living. These are real questions people have. Do I send my kids off to that meat grinder called the university? If not, what do they do? Give me the... Pr I know it's wonderful to trash the university, but what are the practical uh, alternatives? They want to know the answer to that. Uh, or my job situation under the current circumstances, extremely precarious. What am I supposed to do in this, in this kind of world? Or even something as simple as this. You enter a room full of strangers. Are you terrified or are you confident? Do you know what to do in that situation? Do you know how to strike up a conversation with a stranger that puts both you and that person at ease? These kinds of little things are what are going to, when put together, constitute my new project, which I'm going to be launching in a couple of weeks. So if you, get, if you go to nostateeducation.com, get my ebook, you'll be on my mailing list, and I will tell you when this thing launches. I'm launching what I'm calling a school of life, where we're going to take all these other things that aren't part of your formal education, but doggone it are really important to learn how to flourish in a world that hates you. So these three things put together are my little contribution to what we're all trying to do. And I, I'd be glad to discuss it all further, but that's the end of my time. Thank you. Hello, can you guys hear me? I'm going to just sit to talk to you. Um, my name's Katie, and I was at the summit last year with the Tuttle Twins team. Um, I've done a lot of work with them with um, writing and content editing and newsletter stuff. Um, right now, I'm working on a history curriculum that's coming out soon, so that's fun stuff. But I think that I am here on this panel to talk um, not about Tuttle twin stuff, but to talk about um, our life and our experiences and the way that we have navigated um, alternative education. So my husband and I have seven children, 
and um, we homeschooled them all um, up to college for those who chose to attend college. Um, our oldest did, and she just graduated this spring, um, and we have another who um, thought she'd try it out and then quickly decided that that was a terrible thing for her, and she walks away from it. Um, and so I love that Tom talked about theoretical knowledge and, and how we love to talk about all the things that are wrong and all the ways that we could fix them, um, but we're, we're often kind of light on case studies. Um, so I like to think that our family is kind of a case study on this. So we pulled our kids out of school when our oldest was about 10, um, and so some of our younger children never did attend school, which always makes it kind of fun when you know they are in a setting um, like Sunday school, for example, and our son came out and said, my teacher is terrible, I hate her. I said, why? And he said, she says we have to raise our hand before we ask questions. And I was like, oh, that's actually super normal. Sorry, we forgot to teach you that. <laughs> for the most part, um, our kids are you know, well socialized, except that they don't know to raise their hands and stand in line for bathrooms and stuff. But um, we, I, it would have been great to have Liberty Classroom and some of your resources when we were first starting out, because we knew that we didn't want to replicate school at home. Um, we knew the history of the public education system and kind of saw a long time ago that um, it wasn't broken. You know, we always hear, oh, it's broken. It's not broken. It's doing exactly what it was designed to do. Um, and we didn't want, <laughs> and we didn't want to participate in that. So we opted out of it entirely. Um, and then we were left trying to figure out what to do with all these kids who we didn't want to just you know, do school at home. So um, now I think they've coined the term unschooling, which not a favorite of mine. It sounds, I don't know, kind of anti-intellectual, and that's certainly not what we did. But we did focus on each of our children and their strengths and their abilities and their interests. Um, and we spent a whole lot of time um, as a family. Our dinner conversations were always educational. Like when you create an environment in your home where learning isn't compartmentalized, right? We're not learning now, we're just doing life. And we talk about history and we talk about economics. And you know, I was introduced to Mises a long time ago. And so these are ideas that we raised our kids just conversationally teaching them. And how do we learn? Like you don't want to learn something that seems treacherous and tedious and it takes forever. You, you learn things and, and the things stay with you that you're interested in or that you are um, experiencing in a setting that is comfortable and that you're engaged in. And so when you, when you approach teaching your children in that way, it never feels like teaching. We, we went years and years and years without ever purchasing curriculum. We just um, did life with our kids. And what that meant was um, not just turning them loose to do whatever they wanted to, but it meant being very, very engaged as parents. You know, I was always um, working, usually from home, with writing projects and stuff. My husband's been in the military for 18 years, so we were busy people, but we still homeschooled all of our children, and we did it without curriculum um, because that's not what they that's not what they wanted. That wasn't what worked. Um, we allowed them to pursue the things that they felt called to. You know, we have a daughter who's written several books, um, and when she was writing, we would just let her tuck behind this little nook she made behind our couch, and she would write all day long. Um, and she turned out beautiful, beautiful work. We have, you know, another daughter who's opened a bakery, and she spent all of her time baking. And She's making a career out of it because we didn't um, pull her and kind of force her to, you know, do worksheets during the day. Um, and we did still teach, you know, all of the things that they also need to know. They can all solve math problems and stuff. But um, we really focused on teaching our children how to do life. I love your new project. It's awesome. Um, and and we saw that 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 worked when our oldest decided that she wanted to go to college. So she was 16, and um, we said, okay, well, let's try, you know, let's try this and see if it works out. So she 
Um, went to community college for two years, got all of her gen eds done, was able to transfer to university. Um, she got scholarships, it was great. Um, she didn't take the SAT or the ACT. And, and what we kind of learned in that was that it's all a racket, all of it. You don't have to jump through the hoops. You don't have to take this, this course that's just awful. I mean, kids are suffering. <laughs> They're miserable, and I think they're not going to become less miserable anytime soon. They're miserable at school, they're miserable on their paths, they hate to learn, and they have this view of education as this very compartmentalized thing. They hate it, they hate it. Um, and then they go on to college because they're supposed to, and they wander around and accrue debt, and they hate that too. And we have these adults who are just miserable. <laughs> and, and why wouldn't they be? Their path has been miserable. Um, and so when our, you know, our daughter did end up getting into school and thriving and doing fine, but, um, and so we knew that, you know, we hadn't actually ruined them because until she got in, we thought, um, maybe this has just been a terrible mistake. And so we were waiting and, and she did fine. Um, and that gave us confidence, I guess, to continue this course with the rest of our children. She doesn't know that she was the guinea pig, but she for sure was. Um, and now we, we see, you know, the, the public education system, and, and especially these last couple of years, um, so that later tonight we're gonna hear about, you know, where are we, how bad is it, what should we do? Um, in public edu education, we're at a tipping point. Like, it's as bad as you can imagine. So you have to get your kids out of school. Um, you can choose to homeschool, you can choose to use online curriculum, you can choose to unschool, you can do child-led learning. It doesn't really matter right now. Um, I know this sounds like I'm a crazy person, but if you pulled your children out of school and did nothing with them for a whole year, then include them in everything that you do, in all of your trips, in all of your conversations, put them around the intelligent, capable people that you all have in your circles and let them become comfortable around those people, you'd probably do better for them than maybe anything else you could ever do. So if you're, if you're on the fence about, I can't take them out of school, or I'm not qualified to homeschool, or I don't know what to do, just get them out. Like, it's now. You have to do it now. And then you'll figure it out. Like, no one is as qualified to homeschool or to teach your children as you are. No one. Anything that you don't know, you can learn. You can direct them to a capable person that you trust who can teach them. You're, you're the one that's the most qualified to teach them because you're the most invested in them. You know them the best and you care the most. So, so what must be done, like right now, it's that you gotta opt out of this system and, and you'll find the path, but um, it can't be staying in this system. So, thank you. All right, thank you both. Um, I guess my exposure to strategic alternatives in education would be the most recent one, although when I first learned of the Mises Institute in the late 80s, I um, I had 21 hours of undergraduate econ, never been exposed to the Austrian school, and then thanks to uh, Dr. Paul in the 88 presidential campaign, 1988, um, I found the Mises Institute and have been happily associated, at least loosely, ever since. Um, I, I was working in the proprietary school business at the time, which at the time was considered a strategic alternative to education because profit was supposed to be no part of education. Um, but I'm now very happy to work for the nonprofit, which I do. Uh, I think in the board meeting a couple of years ago, the Institute uh, board voted to create an online graduate program, which was the uh, vision of uh, Murray Rothbard and Von Mises for a long time. They tried to get this going at other schools, but no school um, seemed appropriate. So the alternative uh, strategy here was to create our own graduate school. I'm very excited about it. We got a very quick start, in part because uh, Lou Rockwell had the good sense to establish the, uh, the institute in Alabama, uh, which is a very great place to be, and I'm very happy to be there, especially now. But um, we, I was hired in November of 2019, and by August of 2020, we started our first uh, cohort of 11 graduate students. Um, 
I say that's quick because I just spent the earlier part of this week at an accreditation conference in Denver with uh, an organization that uh, with with uh, which we're seeking accreditation. Some of the people at that uh, conference tried to start a school, and it took more than 18 months, closer to two years, for them to even get a state license to teach a post-secondary school class. We filed our application in January after I started in November, and by March we had our state license and we could start teaching students. So um, very happy to be in Alabama for that reason as well. Uh, we've made some significant progress, I'd like to think. We've, start, we've started 31 graduate students in our Master of Arts in Austrian Economics. We will start another cohort in January. Um, we should have graduates in, from this program as early as March of 2022. Um, we are probably within 10 days of filing our application for accreditation, and if some of you are wondering why we would bother to do that, I uh, share your sentiments. That was my initial instinct. Uh, Reputation of the Institute is so good that we had hoped to rely exclusively on our own reputation. I think that would have been great, but uh, little did we figure out that in order to teach students in all 50 states, uh, we would have to apply for licenses in all 50 states, which would cost something in the neighborhood of $100,000, as was described to me earlier in the week. We would have to ride herd on basically 50 different states' regulations, but uh, we found a uh, we found a reciprocity organization that's been adopted by 49 states, which allows us to be licensed in our own state and teach in all 50, uh, which seems like a really good deal. Um, having worked to get Ron Paul on the ballot in all 50 states, I sort of didn't want to have to do that on a continuous basis just to teach good economics. So um, we decided we'll pursue the accreditation. We're offering degrees. We're licensed in our own state. Once accredited, that will allow us to teach in all all uh, 49 states. And if you think accreditors are all bad, uh, another thing I learned earlier in the week is the, the organization that we're working with accredits a gunsmithing school in Arizona. So they can't be all bad, right? Um, so we have some uh, distinct advantages, I think, in our program. Uh, a big thank you to all the donors who've contributed both to the institute and to the program specifically, because this means we don't have to take government aid. We can keep the price low for students. No government aid means significantly reduced regulation, especially at the federal level. We comply with Alabama, join this reciprocity organization, we're good to go in 49 states, and we can teach in the 50th one uh, so long as we have no physical presence there. It's California. No one wants a physical presence in California, including the school. Um, that be a problem. Uh, another super advantage we have is the, uh, the existing infrastructure. The Institute is, as you'll know, uh, from looking at the uh, brochure for next year's Supporter Summit, uh, scheduled for Vienna, as I understand it. We have 39 years of an in infrastructure, and it didn't even cost us $1.5 trillion to create it. Uh, what that infrastructure means to us as a graduate school is we have PhDs like Dr. DiLorenzo, you just heard from, uh, uh, Dr. Woods, uh, lots of them, and they're all eager to give back to the Institute who helped them through their process. So we have PhDs ready to go in exactly what we want them to know and teach. Uh, one of the advantages is in the 100% online program, which we are, means if you went to, well, I had the luxury of going to UNLV, but the best in, instructors in every Austrian topic, uh, we've got the Dr. Kleins, in the plural, teaching micro. Uh, we have uh, Dr. DiLorenzo about to teach a, a class in regulation. Uh, Dr. Newman's, both of them have helped us out. But you, don't, you can get the best Austrian subject specialist without having to move from school to school to school. You do it all in our program, which is fantastic. We already had a library, a great library, and a librarian. This is something that creditors care about, but it's great for the students. If they have need help with research, they can pick up the phone. They can Zoom, our, uh, zoom in, into a meeting with the librarian. Um, and we also have a very great development organization that's existed for a long time and created financial stability, something else students care about, the accreditors care about, and it keeps the price low for the students. So I couldn't be more excited about what I'm doing. No one seems to want my job of working with the accreditors and writing this huge document that we need to present. But I'm very excited about having it. I'm very excited about the program. I'm excited to have people graduating in a few months 
and expanding the program to all 50 states because we can now teach in Warsaw, Poland, but not Warsaw, Indiana. Um, and you might, this, this struck me as odd, but even in, even in 2020 during the online education conversion, several states where we could formally teach have passed legislation that says, no, you can't teach here anymore without getting a state-specific license, even though you have no physical presence in the state. So uh, it's important that we're moving forward with what we're doing. I'm excited about it. So go ahead. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.